All right, guys, good to see everybody. Welcome back. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the, uh, the bye week and, and uh, we're back ready to roll. Um, very productive kind of time away, uh, hopefully for uh, you know, our coaches and, and players to feel refreshed and ready to roll. I know we got a lot of work done taking a look at kind of where we're at after six games and, and where, we can out, where we can improve and, and, and ultimately continue to strive for the team we want to become. Um, so we're excited to get back home. Uh, I've had some great success at home in front of our fans, and and uh, we'll need those uh, th that same type of energy and enthusiasm that we've had there. It's really propelled us to some of those late game situations, finding ways to win games, and and uh, you know we're excited to get back in front of our fans. And really good football team coming off of a big win. I thought uh, you started to really see um, the team that. I've become very familiar with over the last couple of years. Got a lot of respect for Cliff and, and what they do there and, and a lot of their really special players that they have on both sides of the ball. So it'll be a real big challenge uh, for us as a team. And then just to touch on uh, the situation regarding Ole, um, one of those things that uh, I, I do want to respect the legal process and re respect the NFL process and, and the way things are set up. But I can't say Ole called me immediately uh, Sunday morning and, and we had a dialogue throughout the day. Um, he's been very honest and open, uh, not only about the situation, but you know some disappointment for forcing us to get that phone call and him having to make that phone call. Um, but the, the person and the player that, that, that I've learned and got to know very well, um, I have a lot of confidence that as we let this process play out, uh, I know Ole released a statement with his attorney today, but we'll continue to let that play out. But I have a lot of confidence in Ole, the person, the, uh, the human, and the teammate that he is in this building, uh, that things will positively play out. Uh, for Oli. But with that, I'll open it up to you guys. What strengths did you see in those first six games that you want to add on to and what weaknesses were you focused on from the yeah, first six I, games? I think not a lot of times is it easy to see the little things football teams do to win. Um, but we, when you look at uh, being plus four turnover margin, when you look at being a pretty limited uh, penalized team, um, when you look at how we finished halves and games and some of the situational football that we talk a lot about, I think we've done a lot of the little things that help teams win games in this league that maybe don't jump off stat sheets and, and uh, check a lot of boxes for people to be able to see uh, if they haven't seen us play. Um, but uh, I think our guys have played really hard. And, and now to me, it's just about across the board in all three phases, striving for what is that standard? What is that standard of execution? What is that standard? Um, knowing that we're going to play a lot of really good teams and, and we've got to continually grow as a team and, and you get a chance to do that coming out of your bye week and knowing you've got 11 opportunities ahead to really solidify uh, what you are as a team. To me, 5-1 and one is, great, is a great start, but that means absolutely nothing um, each and every Sunday that, that we get opportunities to go play from here on out. Given you, Matt, you have a two and a half game lead in your division. Do you talk about that at all and just say it's nothing, or how do you address that with the team? That's exactly what I, I said to him today. I said we can be really proud of, of, of being 5-1 and one and overcoming some adversity and, and really standing on the foundation of some pillars of how we've tried to build this team inside out from a culture standpoint to how we want to play from a philosophical standpoint. Uh, but ultimately, uh, you prove yourself each and every Sunday in this league. Um, the parity that exists around the NFL, I, the first time really getting a chance to watch a lot of football this past weekend, uh, you just see it. You know, game in and game out, nothing's going to be easy. It's about that elite execution, and we feel very strongly about our team. I feel very strongly about uh, the players we have and their skill sets and, and, and how we're trying to use them. It's just, can we get a little bit better across the board? Can I be better? Can our staff be better? And then ultimately, I feel great about our leadership kind of pushing those points home, and it's how we practice and prepare every week. And, and we won't get any credit for that. We just get to see the results, hopefully, of our process put in place to try to win football games. bye week and just not being rusty? I think it's how you practice. We got a really good work day and Monday coming off of, uh, coming off of the time away. Uh, guys were juiced up, flying around the field. And, and, and now it's just, can we get into that mode of understanding that you get very finite amount of time to, to prepare and practice uh, while still maintaining a, a fresh team, a healthy team? Um, we got to understand that there are no times where we can come out here and and uh, not have productive days and not continue to progress and move forward. Um, the urgency is as high as it's ever been and, and will continue to grow as our team continues to solidify what we are. And like I said, we got to prove it every single week. 
did you learn about Patrick Peterson once you got here, having competed against him for a while, but yeah. once you got inside the same building with him? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'd always heard about the type of person and the leader he is. He's one of our uh, guys that uh, you, our team looks for uh, in-game, throughout the practice week. Uh, you know, he texted me today, hey, let's get the leadership group together today uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page about how important uh, the minute to minute is and the little things. And, and that's one of your players doing that. Uh, that goes a long way. And, and we got a lot of guys with that, uh, with that ability to have that uh, understanding of the importance of their roles in helping define who we are as a team. But uh, just on the field, I think he's you know, coming into a, a year this year kind of in a new scheme and, and playing some different techniques and um, understanding how important his role is in, in really the run and pass game. I thought he played his best game the last time out against Miami. Uh, our team could feel it. His energy was really a deciding factor, I thought, for us on a, you know, a hot day down there in Miami. He was every snap. He just kept getting better and better and better. And now ultimately what I've challenged Patrick to do is you know, be that guy each and every week for us. And we're going to rely on him uh, like a lot of our guys. In those games prior to Miami, would, do you think he was just learning the system? Do you think he just wasn't making plays that were highlight type plays, but was doing okay? Or what was your assessment? Yeah, of I think it's more of that. Yeah. I, it's not, the ball won't always find uh, players, and, and at times it's felt like teams have have maybe worked the other way. Um, you know, not working against Pat as much as maybe he would like. But as I said, you're going to get your opportunities, and, and when you get them, you just got to make sure that uh, you're there. And as he's done, very very. Very, very, uh, or a lot in his career um, with great consistency. He's going to make a lot of plays for us that'll help us win games. How do you, Kevin, how do you, how do you, how do you uh, this year, Kevin, just in terms of a guy that's been a press man corner his entire career and being asked to do some different things, how big of a change has that been for him and how has he handled that? He's handled it really well. Um, I'd like to see him, and, and, and we're going to go ahead and green light him to, to maybe get up and, and be a little bit more competitive at the line of scrimmage just because he's got that skill set and experience doing that. But what I think he's done a great job of, Ben, is using the experience of all those years playing against elite receivers and matching elite receivers. Uh, he's seen a lot of football. He knows uh, you know, so much about his preparation, his learning formations, tendencies. What are we going to get out of these looks? And like I thought, his interception in the second half against the Dolphins, um, that was not the first time he's seen a play like that in a coverage like that. And just that quick trigger to go get the football in that moment was a huge play, but I think it speaks to kind of what you're talking about, Ben, of can he can he continue to thrive and use his experience uh, outside of this scheme while applying it to uh, what we're asking him to do in his role in, in playing all, you know, one of 11 on a defensive uh, defensive team. Kevin, as you reflected on the first six games, was there any, I mean, I know each game, each game plan is different, but offensively, was there any theme that you came back to of, I don't know, stuff that you noticed that you think could, could elevate and um, enhance consistency? Yeah, I think um, the, the situations where we could just continue to have more success on early downs. And what does that look like? It, it can look like a lot of different things. Um, we've, we've run into some situations where maybe the explosive pass game um, has been at times hard to come by just because of how we're being defended. And that's where maybe we need to uh, feature the run game, feature other players besides just Justin and Adam, and uh, allow all five eligibles to come to life. I think Kirk, in that role of understanding that we're trying to activate all of our guys and, and really put up, put together an offensive system where um, we obviously have primaries and, and guys we're trying to get going, but uh, there's nothing wrong with just being smart with the football, making good decisions, and allowing uh, yourself to almost be that point guard where you distribute the ball and, and let our skilled players go to work. I think. Um, just across the board, situationally, it's much easier on third and two to five or six, and and then obviously, and then there's some times where I looked at it. Our red zone execution has been pretty darn good, but the times we haven't finished, um, I think it comes down to execution and our the 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 plays that are had to be there. We got to make them, and then when there's better calls that I can make, I can certainly be better for the group. The splits statistically and win loss wise are, are very different with without Hopkins for them. Yeah. I was just wondering how much he adds and is it just kind of cascade through the whole offense? I think so, just because I think when you look at him, he's uh, got a r pretty unique skill set to get open and separate. Uh, but even when you're able to cover him up, uh, either with help over the top or stay connected with him and man to man, he's still open because of his catch radius and his ability to make plays on the football. And then 
uh, I think he complements Kyler really well because he can win in rhythm, and then uh, those contested kind of opportunity throws can sometimes come on those downs where Kyler gets out of the pocket and is so hard to deal with with his athleticism and accuracy, you know, both in the pocket and, like I said, out of the pocket. So uh, I think those two back together, it's a real challenge for our defense, and uh, we're going to have our hands full for sure. Last two questions. Kevin, as you... What do you ask of Nick when he's trying to simulate a Kyler Murray, Murray in practice? Yeah, I think uh, it's hard. Um, it's absolutely hard to uh, simulate that kind of skill set. But Nick's done a really good job this year, uh, whether it be Chicago or Philadelphia or going back to even the opener, getting ready for Aaron Rodgers and some of the other guys we've played. He's done a great job kind of absorbing how we need him to play to give our defense a really good look and then really running the show. So it's, it's real, live, tangible reps as much as we can do in this setting to get our guys ready for what they're going to see. Um, but we absolutely need to have uh, a way of simulating both those you know, in-schedule, on-schedule type of plays in the pocket and then you know, making sure we're practicing those because even as much as you want to try to avoid those and schematically avoid those, they're going to happen when he gets out and he can be such a problem. So we got to make sure we're practicing that too. On game day, when you have a spy that looks just it just follows a quarterback on big plays, what do you lose defensively? Like if you're an offensive coordinator and you get that look, do you like it or is there advantages to that for the offense? Whenever there's definitely advantages when you know that extra player. Um, if you want to have a, a single high safety or a two deep type of safety look, uh, there's only so many. Especially if you can get five eligibles out, like they do a really good job of doing. There's only so many bodies. If you still want to have a four man rush. Uh, so if one of those uh, cover type players is responsible for the quarterback and they can still have five eligibles in the pass game, that gets to the point where you're going to have four or five one on ones, no matter how you try to protect or disguise or line up in a shell. Uh, so we got to pick our spots to do that because of his impact on the game, both in the run and pass. Um, but at the same time, you know, schematically, uh, I think it comes together. This is one of those games where it's about all 11 and it might sound like a cliche, but if one guy is out of their gap or doesn't maintain the rush responsibilities, it can be a huge play just like that. Thanks, everyone. Thanks guys.